Hey y'all, welcome back to another video kind of centered on the topic of health and wellness and healthy swaps that we use in our home. Today I'm going to be focusing on homeopathic remedies, just home remedies that we use in our family with our children when anyone in our family comes down with a sickness. So I've kind of done a video like this in the past when we had just gotten over some sickness in our home and I kind of shared ways we heal naturally, foods we use to heal, but it was kind of just like generic and more geared towards that sickness, which was like cough, respiratory, runny nose sickness. Today I'm going to be sharing about five or six individual topics of like ailments and sicknesses that you may come across in your home and what we do for each of those. We'll have timestamps down below so if you need to refer back to this in the future for a specific ailment, you'll know exactly which section of the video to visit. So I'll go ahead and share with you, I have a green book of all of my remedies in here and I'm continually learning more and as I learn more, I add to this book. But this is just something I started doing about three years ago when I started researching more natural ways, homeopathic ways, home remedies to heal my family and myself at home and not have to make as many visits to the doctor's office. So as I compiled this research, I started just having a list in my phone, but if I have it in my phone, my husband can't easily reference it if I'm not around or if I'm the one sick. So I just thought I would have things printed out. I've, some of this I have typed up myself. Some of this are things I've printed directly offline. And then I just put it in a specific section in my little binder. So this has just been like my guide go-to for when anyone in our household is sick. I also love it that if I'm the one sick... I don't love being sick, but if I am the one sick, I can ask my husband to reference this book and pull something from it to help me feel a little better. Um, because sometimes when we're the one sick as the mom, we don't want to be running around the house, pulling together home remedies, making teas, pulling together this and that, trying to help ourselves feel better. We just want someone to help us out. So to start out, I just want to remind y'all that our immune systems are amazing. God gave us immune systems for a reason. They have superpowers if we will just let them do their thing. Sometimes they just need a little bit of trust and a little bit of TLC to boost us right back on our feet. So just remember from the get-go here, our immune systems are our best friend when it comes to sickness and we want to trust them. We want to rely on them. We want to let them do their thing and just kind of nurture them along and help us heal from our sickness. Trust your immune system. Don't always run to an over-the-counter medication or an antibiotic because a lot of times you're actually suppressing whatever you're dealing with even more so when you run to those over-the-counter medications. And also before we get started, this is not medical advice in any form or fashion. I'm not a trained medical professional nor do I ever claim to be. This is just truly what I have researched as a mom trying to do what's best for my family and have seen it work miracles with our family, with my children. I just want to pass that along to y'all. Garlic. Garlic is a superpower antibiotic given to us. So we have garlic pills. We also use garlic cloves. At the first sign of any sickness, garlic is antimicrobial, antibacterial, antifungal. It will kill things in their tracks, y'all. It's amazing for healing sicknesses. It's like the best home remedy that I can even pass along to you. So we have these garlic pills that we use, but I really prefer to use like the whole garlic clove. I shared about this in my last sickness healing video. We will take a whole clove of garlic, put it in the back of our mouth, crunch it and kind of let the juices and the flavor seep into our saliva and then swallow it. We will do that every couple of hours, my husband and I, for our children. However, we will just mince it up, put in applesauce, whatever they are eating at the time, just to try to get it into them. So garlic, 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 that is like the best thing to heal any sickness, no matter what it may be. So garlic is like our superpower. We don't ever have it not in our home. And we always have these as backup in case for some reason I'm out of garlic cloves, which is very, very rare. I always have garlic. I'm always cooking with it and I always have it on backup for in case a sickness hits a fever. A fever can come about with almost any sickness. It's our body's first line of defense when killing and eradicating a sickness or a virus or a bacteria or some type of infection in our body. So Fevers will hit on first because that's one of parents' most concerning topics. I know myself, my husband have both been very concerned over fevers in the past. However, though, fevers are our friend. Fevers are actually our body's defense mechanism trying to get rid of the sickness, get rid of the infection. And when we suppress those fevers immediately and don't even let them do their job, we are, again, we're just suppressing that sickness deeper down, making the sickness last longer, making the 
child, the adult, feel worse for a longer amount of time. They may get some temporary relief from relieving that fever, but in the long run, they're going to pretty much doubling, tripling the length of the sickness. So certain organisms need an ideal temperature to survive, and our fever is a body's way of heating up our bodies to basically eradicate that fungus or that organism out of our body, killing it off. So when we suppress the fever, we are allowing that organism, that fungus, that bacteria to continue to live. So just keep that in mind when you see a fever. Don't try to suppress it immediately. A fever of 99, 100, 101, 102 is not even that bad, y'all. The child, the adult may look like they're feeling terrible because they probably are feeling terrible. We all know a fever makes you feel bad and it's really hard to watch your child have a fever and not do anything, but you're really doing what's best for them, just letting that fever be, just offering them comfort measures in other ways, but do not suppress the fever. If there is a fever and you want to just offer them some comfort, I am going to give you some tips of things that we do to help our children feel better, not really suppressing the fever, just kind of helping them feel better as their fever runs through the body and runs its course. All right, so first of all, we always implement teas, herbal teas. I have a whole like wall of herbal teas in our pantry, a variety of things that I've researched again in my little green book of things that will help reduce a fever. So my number one tea reducing fever that I have on hand, I'll go ahead and open up my handy dandy book, is a mix, and I'll have all this linked down below for y'all, but it's a mix of ginger, catnip leaf, yarrow, peppermint, chamomile, and cinnamon. So those are just some really strong, potent herbs that help relax the body, kind of help alleviate the fever, alleviate the symptoms that you feel from the fever, not really getting rid of the fever, just helping the sick person feel better. So that's one of the first things we, we implement is a tea. Another thing we will implement is a bath with an iodine salt soak. So we use these two items and run a warm bath for the child, the adult, whoever is sick at the time. With salt, you can use iodine salt or Epsom salt. And then this right here is iodine with kelp. This um, just kind of relaxes the body, kind of just, you almost feel immediately better when you get in this tub. A warm bath is gonna do wonders anyway, but these two items added to the bath are even more so helping to just kind of draw whatever's in your body out. It really does work. I've seen my children completely turn around after having these baths. You really will see the difference pretty quickly. Next up is a tofu plaster. Now this one sounds really weird and I would have kind of showed y'all, but I don't have any tofu right now. We don't keep tofu on hand, but if someone in our house is getting a fever and I'm noticing that it's lasting for several hours, I'll go ahead and tell my husband to stop and pick up a block of tofu. So what you do is you take the tofu. So I have a little tutorial here I refer back to for my husband or myself when we need to make one of these. So we take some tofu, take some ginger and take some flour. You kind of mix it up and make like a patty mixture and then put it directly on the forehead of the fever affected person and the tofu has a really cooling effect while the ginger reduces inflammation in the body helping that fever to speed itself along and just kind of speed things along and just if nothing else help the sick person feel better a little bit for some temporary relief so that one sounds kind of weird but tofu plaster is another really unique really helpful one it's one of those ancient things that they did in the past but over the years our western medical culture kind of forgets about these things that our ancestors and that people in other countries still use today so Tofu plaster is another really interesting one, but I've seen good effects from it. And then finally, one of our newer methods to help with fever is calcium lactate. So our functional practitioner, when we went to see her the last time we were sick, I had never heard of this supplement, calcium lactate. So this is basically like the holistic, the natural form of Tylenol or Advil, which is a fever suppressant. We all know that, but Tylenol and Advil have really adverse effects on the brain. Um, I won't even get into all that, especially for children. So we really try to avoid those at all costs. Um, I know a lot of people think that there's nothing wrong with them. I won't really get into the controversy of all that, but I have done quite a bit of research on Advil and Tylenol and just don't trust using that with my children, myself, my husband. So what we use instead, if the fever is getting really high and we just need to have some temporary relief for the child or the adult, we use calcium lactate. So this is basically a calcium supplement. So when our body has fever, it's using calcium to kind of fight that fever. It's depleting our calcium stores, which when you're minerally depleted, fever is using that calcium up really quickly to fight the infection, to fight the bacteria. When we replenish that mineral with the calcium lactate, it's going to help us to feel better and also provide that fever more fuel to fight the infection. So the practitioner explained that, our holistic practitioner explained this to me, and it made perfect sense. And I will admit, my husband and I were kind of skeptical. My husband especially, when our, we tried this out the first time with our daughter when on her first fever, and it was miraculous. So I would not use this like 
all day long. Um, you don't want to suppress the fever. You do want to let the fever do its thing. But if you're needing your child or yourself to be able to get some sleep and it's just almost unbearable because the fever's really high or you're really in a lot of discomfort from the fever, this is great to kind of temporarily alleviate those symptoms, kind of replenish our mineral stores and allow the fever to do what it needs to do all in a very safe natural way versus Tylenol and Advil and all those over-counter fever suppressants that many people are recommended by their doctors. All right, that is a fever. Just again, remember fevers are our friend. They are there. They are God's defense mechanisms for our body. We don't want to get rid of them. We kind of just want to alleviate it, give the body, give this um, immune system a little TLC and care as it's fighting through the fever. All right, that was probably my longest spill because fevers are like the most common thing parents want help with when their child is running a fever. So moving on to stomach bugs, stomach viruses, stomach infections, tummy aches. Activated charcoal basically like clings to whatever's in the body, the toxin in the body, and carries it out. So this is a wonder for stomach virus, stomach bugs, tummy aches. So we, the way we use this is either I make gummies with it. We make gummies, fruit gummies all the time with gelatin. But if someone is having stomach issues, I will just toss a little bit of activated charcoal. It'll make black gummies, like licorice looking. But this will really alleviate a tummy ache. If I don't want to make the gummies, I'll just mix this in with a little bit of applesauce for my children. For my husband and I, we'll just kind of drink it with a little bit of water or orange juice or whatever liquid we want to and take ingest it with. So another stomach issue trick is some essential oils. I don't, I'm not going to talk a lot about essential oils because I know everybody doesn't have essential oils in their home. If you do, or if you want to invest in a few, here are a few that I would recommend. So this is an actual, like a blend that I put together. I have it labeled as tummy troubles under age of two. So there are different ratios for different um, ages. So little children don't need as potent of a mixture as adults would. This is just frankincense and peppermint. So I will apply this to my children's tummy. Those two oils together just kind of alleviate the symptoms, kind of get things moving along, just kind of help you feel better. If you don't have the frankincense, you can also just use a little bit of peppermint. Peppermint is much cheaper to buy than frankincense, but this is just a blend that I made up on my own. This is just a peppermint roller that I had bought in the past that I just keep in our little holistic medicine cabinet for when tummy troubles do arise. Peppermint is great for lots of other things as well. Headaches, I'll get to that in a minute, but that is what we do for tummy troubles. Oh, also hydration, um, not just water, but like coconut water, something with some really good electrolytes. A lot of times people will do Gatorades or Pediasure, but those don't have the best ingredients. If you've been around my channel, you know I'm very big on reading ingredient labels and I just don't agree with all the things in those products. If you, if you wanna use them to get some electrolytes back in your body, great, but I would advise using coconut water instead because it's a much cleaner version of a liquid to intake when you're sick and when we're sick we don't want to be putting extra toxins extra extra preservatives extra things for our body to break down when we want it to heal from the sickness and not worry about breaking down chemicals and toxins that we put into our body moving to ear infections let me just kind of talk y'all through what i do for that oh, i don't have it with me so we again dose up on the garlic garlic is antibacterial antifungal antimicrobial it will break down the bacteria the infection in the body um, so garlic for a child that's not going to swallow a peel, I'll either open up a capsule and put it in their juice or smoothie or applesauce, give it to them that way. But what is absolutely phenomenal for an ear infection is a garlic infused oil. So what you do is you basically set up a little double broiler on your oven, put a little bit of olive oil, coconut oil, whatever oil you have on hand, sprinkle a little bit of minced garlic in there, kind of let it infuse together over the double broiler. You don't want to put it directly in the heat because it's going to kind of scorch it. You just kind of want to let the garlic infuse with the oil, strain out the garlic, and you'll have a garlic infused ear oil. So basically what you do is you put one little drop in the ear, not in the eardrum, just in the ear every hour, every two to three hours as needed. And we saw effects of this within 12 to 24 hours. Um, I've heard even stories of children being complete running around the house the next day after an ear infection. So garlic infused oil is my number one tip for ear infections. You can also put a drop or two of hydrogen peroxide in the ear if you know this is not like a ruptured, ruptured eardrum, if it's truly an ear infection. Um, you don't want to put any liquids like that to the eardrum if you have a ruptured drum. But as far as just an ear infection or an earache, hydrogen peroxide, but I number one recommend the garlic oil. I did that with my son with his first ear infection and immediately like saw results. My next sickness ailment that I want to cover is but runny nose, congestion, coughs, just like respiratory coughing infections. So 
This is kind of a broad one, but I'll kind of tell you what we do. So again, first line of defense is garlic, either in the pill form or the clove cap clove form. We just chomp it up, mix it with our food, eat it whole. Some supplements that we like to intake, vitamin C and vitamin D from the sun. Anytime you're dealing with a sickness, as far as like head colds, sinuses, runny nose, coughs, you want to get as much sunlight, as much sunshine, as much vitamin D on your body, soaking into your skin as possible, as well as a vitamin C from a whole food supplement, a whole food citrus supplement. It's lots of vitamin C. It's made from ascorbic acid, which is not something our body recognizes. So if you look at your vitamin C and you see ascorbic acid, toss it. Unless it's like ascorbic acid from a certain citric fruit, there are some like that, but I still would not would just prefer to know one that's truly whole food based. So this one is Camu Camu, Arceola powder, buckwheat berry, freeze dried berries, just like a bunch of berries, cranberries, cherries, lemon peel, like truly citrus fruits that we get vitamin C from. Um, so check your vitamin C bottles. I'll link my favorite down below. This is it. But anytime we're dealing with like an infection or a nose cough, we double up on vitamin C, garlic, sunshine, outdoors, being outside as much as possible. This is another one I love for any, I probably should have mentioned this with the stomach virus too, but this is a bentonite clay. This is only safe though for adults over the age of 12, adults and children over the age of 12. So basically this is another like detox thing. If you consume a little bit, it binds with whatever's in your body, kind of carries it out as a toxin. And this one is great for any head colds, coughs, sinus congestion, stomach bugs. Um, I just kind of clumped it in here with the general cough, cold, and congestion. So. This is a great one. I'm trying to look at what else I have over here. As far as a cough syrup, a lot of times we want to turn to over-the-counter medicines for cough syrups. Again, those are really not that helpful. They may give you some temporary, but you're really just suppressing that cough by taking the cough syrup. So let me give you a natural cough syrup that we make. So anytime we get a cough in our house, I go ahead and immediately mix up a mixture of honey, ginger, and then two or three essential oils, usually cinnamon and clove. Those are like strong kind of like alleviating ones to help break things up. So I infuse the ginger in the honey, um, kind of shake it around a few times, and then we just lap it up by the spoonful. I advise you just to look into some other options than all the over-counter medications. I know I've said this a hundred times, but those are really just treating your symptoms. They're not, they're not actually alleviating the deep root cause of whatever's causing you the sickness. Next up are steam baths. Um, that's going to break up the congestion, break up the runny nose, get it all flowing, break up that cough. So you can either do this in a little bathroom, steam up the shower, put some essential oils in there. My favorite to use are tea tree and eucalyptus for breaking up congestion, sinuses, runny nose, or like that's what I recommend for a child. But as for an adult, for an even stronger like steam bath, what I recommend is boiling a pot of water, putting your essential oils in there, put your face over it, put a towel over your head. I'll give you all a demonstration of this. Put a towel over your head and then just deep breathe through your nose. And you will literally, within like two minutes, and snot will be dripping out of your nose into the pot. It's, it's quite disgusting, but it's kind of amazing to see all of that coming out of your body that easily. Um, the steam tent is going to make it kind of hard to breathe because you're like in a steam bath almost, but it will break things up. That really helps. Do that a couple times a day. We do that when we have congestion, sinus, sinus issues that we're dealing with. Onions are also great to break up congestion. I've seen moms who make little pockets on little t-shirts for their kids and they'll put an onion on their child's chest. That will help break up congestion from any kind of respiratory cough, um, bronchitis issues you may be dealing with. I also did a recently invest in a vapor rub, a like natural petroleum free vapor rub. I'll link this down below, but this is great for breaking up congestion, rubbing it on the chest in the place of the over the counter vapor rubs, rubs that you can buy at the pharmacy. I always recommend rest and fasting as much as possible. Only offer foods when the child or the sick person requests something to eat. You don't have to constantly make a sick person eat. Your body is not going to be hungry for a reason because it's fighting off a sickness. All right, and I'm going to end out talking about headaches. So my, it's kind of hard for you to know if your child has a headache, but for an adult, that's a, that's a big thing for a lot of adults. And I'm a firm believer that headaches are coming about to tell us something. Usually there's either an underlying issue that we need to address because there's a lot of like brain activity that I don't even know much about. But I feel the number one reason that my husband, myself, my kids and I get headaches as long as there's not an underlying cause is toxic overload, toxic exposure on our body. So our bodies are trying to tell us, get away from that area, get away from this food, get away from this cleaner, get away from this substance when we get a headache. When you walk down the aisle in Walmart or the perfume store, um, 
in the mall or the Walmart aisle with all of the detergents and scents, I myself immediately get a headache. My mom has always gotten headaches when she walks through the prefer perfume, prefer perfume counters in the mall. And that's her body, our body's way of telling us, get away from this area. I, I can't handle this, uh, this toxic overexposure of all these perfumes and fragrances and just chemicals that are being laden into our body. So that's what I truly believe is the underlying reason for headaches, unless there's something much more serious going on. So a lot of times you can drastically lessen your headaches, the amount of times you get headaches from just lessening your toxic exposure. And I did just share a video on healthy swaps, home swaps, and things you can change out in your home to kind of lessen the toxic overload on your body. So check that video out. I'll link it down below if you're wanting to lower the toxic exposure in your home, which will in turn help with headaches. But with that being said, there are going to be just circumstances where you just get a headache. A lot of times I do notice that I get a headache if I've been around a new area where there's really strong perfumes or someone's really strong laundry detergent or just smells. A lot of times those are the reasons I get headaches personally. So I know that there's a, I know that the, I kind of know the reason why I got it, but I still want to alleviate it and help it go away. I found this amazing resource one time on Branch Basics Instagram stories. And they basically had little slides talking about different types of headaches. So a headache on your forehead, a headache on your back of your head. So they like break down the different spot that your headache may be happening and tell you what to do for each one. So I'll just kind of run through this quickly and I'll probably type this out down below to have something for you to reference back to. But for headaches on the forehead, avoid alcohol, sugar, natural sweeteners. Um, a lot of it's like foot soaks, rubbing a specific area of your toe. Refle foot reflexology is great for alleviating a lot of things. My grandfather actually, who's now deceased, but he was an expert in foot reflexology and actually used to do a lot of foot massages on myself and my sister and my mom and my dad. Kind of taught us a little bit of how amazing the foot the veins in your foot travel to your head and kind of alleviate certain symptoms and sicknesses and ailments. So that's a big one for headaches. Usually have my husband do a couple of those acupuncture, foot re reflexology pressure points when I have a headache, which thankfully is very rare. But again, if I'm around a lot of toxins or around a new environment with a lot of smells, chemicals, I usually will get a headache and that's your body telling you something is wrong, change it. Now, I may actually make like a little PDF downloadable for y'all for the headache section because I found this so helpful. If I have a really bad headache and I want to alleviate it, I want to have something easily that I can go read. I don't want to be looking on my phone, looking at a blue light that's going to make my headache even worse, trying to find a remedy. So this has been great for me to look to. I can kind of like pinpoint where I feel the headache and look directly at this page and know what I can do to try to alleviate the headache. And a lot of times sleep will alleviate a headache. Um, again, avoid limiting, lowering your toxic exposure will kind of get rid of headaches, I believe, over time. But that's kind of my spiel on that. Um, again, I'll have this link. I think I'm going to create something down below for y'all to have as like a printable if you want to print this out on headaches. I also brought this first aid salve in here. I didn't like talk about cuts and scrapes, but cuts and scrapes. Um, Neosporin doesn't have the best of chemicals either. This is our alternative for Neosporin. I didn't write that down in my notes to tell y'all, but I did have this in our little holistic medicine cabinet, herbal cabinet, and I wanted to show it to y'all at least. And it's just a mixture of herbs and some great oils to alleviate cuts, burns, stings, any little ailments, bumps, and bruises that your child may come about as your children get older, get more active, get more injury prone. This is great to have on hand. All right, so I have gone through uh, five or six ailments with y'all. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you took some notes or either save this video to go back and refer to if sickness comes about in your family. Again, I'll have a little link down below for the, the headache section on what to do for this type of headache, what to do for this type of headache. I hope this has been helpful to y'all. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this type of video, kind of just listing out what we do. And if you have any questions or any other ailments that come about, let leave them in the description box below. Maybe we have experienced and I can give you some advice on that or maybe someone else watching this video has experienced it and can let you know down below. I'm a firm believer in being a community here of like-minded moms and dads and just natural-minded individuals and just sharing with each other what we know and what we can do to help each other. So thank y'all for watching this video today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!